All right, guys, how you doing? This is Anthony Roberts, um, MMA fighter, musician, multi-instrumentalist. Um, here to make a live reaction video to my last fight, which I have lost via TKO, second round. This is uh, really hard for me to do, um, just simply because, you know, obviously I don't like to see myself lose, but this is very necessary for me and everyone else who who basically wants to know you know what happened and how I felt during the time and all that stuff all that jazz so here we go we're gonna bring the fight up right now now take it that I took this fight on um, 11 days notice not making any excuses but 11, uh, out of those 11 days, I can only train maybe six, seven days. So think about it. The weigh-in is, um, Friday, fight Saturday. That's another day I could not train. And I took the fight on June, um, June 18th. So less than, basically less than 10 days. I had to prepare for this high-level competitor, Andrew Geisler. Shout out to Andrew Geisler. Um, a hell of an opponent. I simply, I was, I was ready, but I wasn't ready. I was not ready for the level of grappling he had to bring to the table. I did not know he was a brown belt and BJJ. I had just broken up with my team that I trained for the last nine months with. And basically, when I stopped the fight, honestly, I made it seem like I was in shape, but I was not totally in shape. So here we go, guys. Let's watch this. I wasn't in the shape that I could be in. You understand? For my title fight, I want to be in top peak condition. Now, uh, something went wrong with these guys' audio or something. Um, I don't know what they did wrong. The engineer, whoever the live engineer was, did not obviously get the audio for this part. But this is totally cool because, you know, here I am talking with you guys. So as you can see, I was ready. If you look in the look on my face, I was very confident. I was not too confident, but I, I was I was ready. I really believed I can win this fight. I I thought I was gonna win for sure. Not to take anything away from Andrew Geisler, but I, I am one of the top featherweights in my opinion. Like what I have to bring to the featherweight division is unmatched. This is what I thought at the time. You know, obviously, it's a little different than that. You know, there's certain things that I did not do to win this fight. So, first of all, the uh, announcer messed up my name and my whole ritual I usually have. He uh, said, Shotgun Anthony Roberts. I did not like his voice. I don't know, compared to the guy from FCP, Full Contact Promotions, he was not as vocal like that real old baritone like bassy type of style he had more of a like a modern i don't know i didn't like it and walking out i couldn't even hear my music they actually had to restart it four times um or two or three times before i walked up because i didn't even hear it being started so the whole vibe was just different like the ring the octagon to me was smaller than fcp um, it was more of like a prize fighting vibe, like us, we're in a hotel type of thing. Let's or a casino. I mean, let's uh, let's bet on some fights instead of being like an arena type of vibe. So here we go with the first round. And um, another a uh, little before I start, this another fact is I did not have a corner for this fight, or I did not have my corner. As I said before, I had broken up with my team, and it took me a while to find a new team and settle down with them, which caused me to basically not have a great, like a super great relationship. So my team didn't even come out. Um, I mean, I'm sure if I, I don't know, there was a lot of excuses why, but both of my coaches could not come, Robert Giles and Casey Lamb. They could not make it to the fight, which really really affected me. I didn't let people know, but that really affected me. So anyways, 
first rounds here. Thank God to the guys in Canada at Primal MMA. They showed up and cornered me. Thank God. They did a great job. You know what I mean? Great guys. So here we are with the first round. Um... As you can see, we are both in a big Dan Mergliata. That tripped me out. We are both ready. I come out, take center cage. Instantly, I start probing right here. I'm going to pause it off and on. I'm probing right now. My jab. I look pretty good. It looked like right here. Like, I was ready for the takedown. Like, it looked like right here he was trying to go for a takedown. And I basically, like, stopped him with it by showing him. I was, I was he telegraphed it. That was a great little Dutch block I did. Kick, counter, boom, boom, but I missed. Everything, I don't know, I was rushing it, man. I don't know. So uh, right now, I feel really good. In my head, in the fight, I'm like, yes, this is everything I've been waiting for. It's a title fight. I am living my dreams. So I'm controlling the center. Look real smooth to me, standing up. Right there, countered the kick with the uh, nice little straight right. Barely hit him, though, if at all. Threw a kick, boom, 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 all right. So right there, I'm, I he showed me something right there. He looks very scared. If in my, in my At this moment, I'm like, yeah, he does not want to stand with me. You know, I, I felt the fear in his face. Throw some nice jabs. See, right here, man, I just, the way, looking back, I'm like, damn, if I would have kept it standing. So, right here, he lands a nice little um, right hand to my chest after I throw his kick. So, that's I throw his kick. He lands it right to my chest, which could have hit my face, but thank God I got my head off center line. So, right there, I'm like, okay, I felt this power a little bit. Every time he was throwing a kick, I was, I was trying to counter it. That's what I should have kept doing. So, as you can see, he throws a kick, but as soon as he... Uh, even before he lands, I'm, I'm throwing the right hand back at him. Boom. After that, you see me uh, clap my hands, which symbols, you know, come you know, come get me. So right here, I get a, uh, he go. I'm going to let this play. So he, uh, after I counter his punch, he goes for a, um, a takedown. Boom. Land that. So right there, I get a nice cross face, a cross face across his chin and an underhook at the same time. Boom. And right now we're battling for the inside position. I felt really strong in the clinch. Like, even though he backed me up, but as you can see right now, I'm dominating the clinch. So I got double underhooks, press him against the cage. The only reason why I did this was because I felt stronger. Trust me. If I didn't feel stronger in the clinch, I would not even engage in the clinch with him. But right here, I was like, oh, is this all he has to offer standing up? There's no way he's even going to get me to the ground. So right here, I'm going and got head position, uh, inside knee position. Right here, as you can see, I'm trying to go for a, uh, a knee, uh, what do you call it, a, uh, a knee tap, takedown type of cage takedown. But right here, he braces. He was about to, he has great balance. He was about to fall, and then he braced right there. Right here, I should have landed a few punches, but I first thought in my, in my mind was go for a knee, to the, like a Muay Thai clinch knee, which I've been trained Muay Thai since I was 15. But... My uh, inner instinct said, no, don't do that. It's amateur. So right here, I got a Muay Thai clinch, as you can see, right on his face. That's awesome. You know what I mean? But an amateur, you can't knee. So I kind of, like, put myself in a hole. Because as soon as I did that, I kind of brought him back up to, like, a... He has, like, an Ashiguruma position on me. And uh, I'm trying to take his back at this point. I'm trying to let him take me down. And as you can see right here, boom, I thought I was going to have back control. But I did not have the, uh, his right side controlled. And as you can see, he lands that nice in uh, guard. And I'm now in half guard. Now I transition to uh, full guard eventually. Controlling his posture very well. Everything you see here, I'm doing on purpose. So I was just trying to, so 1 minute 25, just trying to get it stood up. Uh, right now, he's pressuring me in my chin. Like, he's putting a lot of head pressure on me against the cage, which uh, did not feel good. 
but I'm just being very calm. And at this point, I I really thought maybe it should have been stood up in a few more seconds. But right here, I'm like, fuck it. I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna just be on the back the whole fight. So I go for a rubber guard, uh, mission control. Um, I'm try. I should. I what I did wrong here is I did not uh, clear the head. I didn't go for uh, Jew claw or uh, kung fu move. I didn't. I mean, I'm sorry, Jew claw. I didn't go for the kung fu move, and I didn't basically. Uh, I didn't finish the rubber guard path, which right here I could have got. If you look up right here, I could have got a arm bar. But in my head, I was trying to stand up. I don't know why I did not attack. You know, right here, I could have went for a few things. Especially right here, I could have had a triangle. But, you know, we live, we learn, guys. You know, I, I, I didn't realize how to, much, you know, advantage I would have had. So right here, I just accepted that. Guard pass. And go to lockdown. I'm trying to, as you see here, almost got him back to guard. I got the hips lifted. As you can see right here. Um, not right here, right here. I lift up the hips, trying to get back to guard, but he does a great job of settling back down. So I'm trying to go for, uh, right here. I could have got up. I don't know why I didn't. As you can see, I scooted away. So right here, but he fouled me. He's really just pressure, pressure. And so I'm trying to like, just get back to guard or something, but I'm doing a great job. And this point, I was really like doing a really good job of, uh, just stopping his ground and pound and like everything here, I wasn't trying to take too many chances by exploding up my feet, which I honestly I should have. I had the strength, I had the power, I had the technique. You know, should have wall walked. I was a little bit too calm in looking back. Had his posture control. He didn't really do much on the ground, no damage at all. So I guess they gave his round to him. Oh, the commentary's back on. And uh, a little note, he looked extremely tired when uh, he got up. Like, he looks very tired. So that said a lot to me. That always says a lot to me when I spar an opponent, grapple, and they're more tired than I am. That means they took a lot to hold me down. It took a lot to keep me there. Spent a lot of energy. So thank, thank you to uh, guys in Primal MMA for quartering me once again. They did a great job. I did what they could, you know what I mean? They knew me a little bit more. Maybe they could have helped me a little more with some of the words, you know, some of the things that they knew I could have implemented better, some of the game plans that I usually have done in my past fights. So here we go. I'm stood up off my chair within 20 seconds of the... The uh, what do you call it? The opening bell. I was really tired, though. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't look as tired as I felt, but I was uh a little bit drained. Not not too much, but I was I was pretty tired. That weight cut really fucked me up. So here we go. I come out strong again. Take center for stage. Another thing that messed me up was he likes to touch gloves. I'm the, I don't like touching gloves, and I, he trapped me into that every time. Honestly, in my head I was gonna come out and just punch him in the jaw. But he puts his hands out, and it's like a friendly thing, and I don't do that. I don't, I don't, you know, I, we'll do that before, but not, I usually don't touch gloves with people. So right here, and it kind of makes me into a friendlier vibe. Land a little jab right there. So right here, I got the center. He tried to go for a uh, push kick. He was very sloppy, though. If you look back, like, standing up, I had many opportunities. I, if I would wait a little longer, like, he really could have got hit with a left hook right there. But he's awkward. That's one thing. He's very different. Right here, I'm trying to basically frame with the right hand and go uh, left uppercut and hit his uh, wrist. He's good. Good job at just me of slipping off the way of the punches at the last second. So right here, I try to time a uh, right hand. I mean, a right kick with a right hand. Boom. He throws a nice little switch kick. Hits my glove. Made me get out the way. So I go for a Superman to left hook. 
Now this is the uh, this is the beginning and end, guys. Because right after I did this Superman punch to left hook, um, he throws a spinning heel kick out of nowhere, which did not land, as you can see. But that really threw me off. I was surprised. Like, okay, he's throwing. You know, it made me think he was gonna strike. It made me think he was getting uh, impatient. So I get I close the distance and push him on the cage and try to land a uh, a jab to right hook right hand. And I I landed it grazingly, which if you see right here, he pushes off the cage with his butt and darts at me with a f double leg. Watch. Right, push off, boom. Which was a very good takedown, guys. That was the strongest takedown I ever I ever had to go against. He put everything into that takedown. And compared to the first time first round, where I um right here where I get a cross face, I could not get a cross face right there. He basically, uh, I closed too much in, and he got right under my punches. Right under. See, right? Once you come like gets under your arms, you got the takedown. Right there, I could not get a cross face. And he goes full on with the takedown, all the way to the damn center of the cage. Okay, now this is hard for me to watch, but it is what it is. So right here, I'm pretty calm. I'm like... Telling myself to be calm, which I really shouldn't have been as calm as I was. I should have been creating a little bit more of a scramble. But I'm doing a good job of keeping him from not from punching me, from transitioning to mount. He's a very patient grappler. He has a really nice old school Gracie pressure pass. So right here I'm blocking his hips, trying to shrimp right here. But there really is no space. Take it. He has a BJJ brown belt to a blue belt. Right here is the beginning and the end. As you can see, he moves his hand from side mount to inside side mount. And he's going to basically just walk his hips to north-south. Now, when someone does this, this means they're going for a north-south choke, in my opinion. So I'm th what I do out of instinct is just put my hand from blocking his hip to above mine right here it goes from blocking his hip watch my right hand and it goes up and as soon as i did that he transitions to mount as you, right here start so as soon as he did this like i'm just trying to show you the little things that maybe people thought i didn't do right and i did but it just wasn't good enough which hurts me so as soon as he did this i'm scrambling as you can see my I'm right on my hip. I'm scrambling. I'm scooting away. I'm pushing off right there, but it wasn't enough. I don't know what I didn't do right. This is why I got to do jujitsu more because I don't know what I didn't do right. Right here, I scoot away, but then it was the sweat or something. It started to land the punches. None of these are really landing, as you can see. I'm trying to scramble right there, get a leg. but Going back, got up to my knees, transitions right there. Does a good job of going for a uh, truck calf cutter. I get up. Man, this kid's so fucking good. Like, seriously, I just, like, just smothering you. Because as soon as I got out of this, I thought it was up. I'm li really ready to stand up right here. He was on me, man. He was fucking on me. And already ready to throw that left second hook in. Now I'm ready to, you know, I'm ready for hell right now. He's trying to, He's trying to kill me. I'm telling myself in my head, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up, move, move, move. So I'm trying to see if you can see my legs. It might not look like I'm doing much, but I'm trying to cover up at the same time as breaking his his hooks he has on me. So I'm walking my legs, trying to scissor him to get him off me. That's the only way you can is walk your hips up. Try to get his three-quarter guard. And I am, as you see, I almost got him right here. But then he transitions to mount. And I see it coming. So my eyes, I'm like, nah, you can't let him get to mount. That's going to be worse. So I, I, I'm i kind of stuck here, man. It's like pick your poison. Like I should have went to three-quarter guard looking back. I am moving. I'm trying to transition. I was fine. I was not concussed. 
but he's pressuring me with his head into my head. That really was just like, and here it goes. He flattens me out for a full, like right here, where is it? He flattens me out for a full, like a real flatten out for like a split second. And I'm trying to scissor my legs. He's hitting me, but he's not really landing them. Um, but that doesn't matter. If you're letting anybody punch you right there, those are landing. Boom. 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 So right here, I'm trying to defend with both hands. He started hitting my hand. And I just had started defending. Dan stopped it, which I don't understand. But cause when, as you can see, I break the hook right here. Like right there is when I try to break the hook. But it was too late. <laughs> At that point, you had already stopped it. Which, I thank you, Dan Murgrata. I mean, you're trying to save my life. You know what I mean? You're not trying to let anything bad happen. And we will we will run it back, Andrew. We will. Okay? I, I learned a lot from this. Now, thank you. So, that's uh, my reaction to my last title fight. This was really hard for me to do. But this is part of the process, guys. If you're not really willing to analyze yourself in the darkest moments, then you will never surpass those dark moments. As you can see, I was very torn in my head. I was fine. I wasn't concussed. I told him, you're a champ. You know what I mean? You deserve this. Have your night. We'll be back. As you can see, he was really tired. Like I said, you see him, man. He worked for that. I'm, we, he deserved that. I made him work for that. You got to kill me to beat me. And I think Dan knew that. Like, I was going to either just KO me or I was not going to. It was only 20 seconds left and all. I probably was going to survive. But who knows what kind of damage it would have done, you know, long term. So, I'm grateful. Thank you, Slim Lou, Cage Wars, Benfield, everybody over there at uh, Cage Wars. I will be back. It was a great weekend, man. I, I learned a lot. Referee Dan Margliotta has called a stop to the fight at 2 minutes 27 seconds into the second round for your winner by TKO and the new Cage Wars featherweight champion, Andrew Nessler. So I bow to him, telling him, you know, enjoy your night. We'll be back.